Thank you very much, songsters, for introducing us to worship with that lovely song, a, a song that reminds us that God is there, working around us and in us and through us, but it's a challenge as well. I will go wherever the Lord sends me. We're going to continue our worship now by singing together, He came to give us life in all its fullness. This is the kind of song that sounds like it should be in a musical, but we're going to sing it to worship this morning. So let us stand, please, and sing all of it the way through. Imagine a world where nobody talked. Can you imagine that? Or, or where nobody typed even, where there was nothing to read. Nobody could read or write letters. Would that be your idea of heaven or hell? Such a world, so quiet. 
I suppose it depends what kind of day we've had, whether our last conversation was pleasant or unpleasant. If nobody could talk or type or write, I think we would still look for ways to communicate with one another, perhaps with a smile or a frown. If nobody talked, how would we make friends? Hopefully we would look at each other and, and smile, maybe shake hands. I think we would find a way because to be fully human, we need each other, don't we? We, we can't uh, survive for long completely on our own. I think if nobody talked, it wouldn't be long before somebody invented talking. We want to share our stories, our joys and sorrows, our ideas and dreams. That's part of what it means to be human, to share, and talking helps us do that. But there's another dimension to being fully human as well, I think. The way to have life in all its fullness is to enjoy relationships with other humans by talking, but also to enjoy a relationship with God, to reach out to God because God has reached out to us. And that's really the essence of that song that we were singing. He came to give us life in all its fullness. God reaching down to the world and Jesus living among us, walking and talking and teaching and healing. God does that with his word. He reaches out to us through the words that we read in, read in the Bible. He reaches out to us through Jesus. He reaches out to us by his spirit. He shares his mind with us and calls us to reciprocate. That's what praying is all about. Not just talking to God, but listening to him as he reaches down, as he speaks with us. And so we're going to do that just now as we continue our worship and sing a chorus, Faithful God, All Sufficient One. Let's sing these words prayerfully. And then let us tune our minds to him. Listen for his voice to us this morning as we pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you 
thankful because you are a God who chooses not to create and then just leave your creation to get on with things by, by itself. You created us, you made this world in which we live and then you choose to be involved in our lives. You reached out to us through your word, through your word in the pages of the Bible, through your word in the body of Jesus Christ, the Son. And so, Father God, we pray that you will help us to have hearts that are open to your reaching out, ears that are ready to listen and eyes that can see. We thank you, Father, that we can be in touch with the one who created us. And we pray, Father, that that might be the case not only here today, but tomorrow and the next day. Not only in our quiet moments, but in our struggles, in our difficulties, in our challenges, we pray that we might find you there alongside us. And as we pray, Father, we think about a world which has many struggles and challenges. And we pray, Father, that people might perceive you in all of that. And that somehow or another, people might experience your healing, your shalom, your fullness. And we understand, Father, that one of the ways that you want to do that is through your people. And so this morning, Father, we offer ourselves to you, to be used by you to make a difference in our communities, in our families, in our work life, in our student life. Wherever we, we find ourselves, Father, work in us and through us to shed your light onto this world. We pray again for the places in this world, Lord, which are torn apart by war. We pray for Lebanon and Gaza and Ukraine. We pray, Lord, for peace, for wisdom and for compassion and for understanding between those who see one another as enemies. And Father God, as we worship you this morning, come close to us, challenge us and change us, we pray. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now let's listen please to the singing company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
thank you, singing company. That was lovely for reminding us that God <laughs> is always there. Thank you very much. And here are the announcements for today and for the coming weeks. First of all, we say uh, the, the, the flowers this morning are actually provided by the core. But we say thanks to Sue for, for arranging that uh, lovely flowers at the front of our hall this morning. Today, after the meeting, as usual, we will have our tea and coffee fellowship. And our uh, programme this week is, uh, is as it normally is. We have our walk-ins. Uh, on Monday and Wednesday between 11 and 2 when the hall is open and anybody is welcome to come along and join us there for tea, coffee and fellowship and on Wednesday there is also a craft group that meet during that time um, and then also tomorrow we have our home league meeting for the ladies at 1.45 tomorrow afternoon next Sunday our worship will be here at 10.30 again and our leader will be Major David and just looking ahead again to Saturday November the 9th we will have a coffee morning here in the hall and during that coffee morning, there will be the, the opportunity to view the 150-year anniversary knitted display that was prepared by many of our ladies, and also some work that has been done by our Wednesday craft group. In Core Family News, we continue to think of those who are unwell at the moment. Uh, we think particularly of Peter McCulloch, we believe still in hospital, but we're very pleased to hear that uh, Becky McLean is now out of hospital, so we thank God for that. Well, that is our announcement. Thank you for your attention this morning. Uh, we will have our uh, offering in a moment, but first, Major David has an announcement for us. Yes, we'll have the offering in a moment. Um, I am here to announce that um, uh, our Corps Sergeant Major, Chris Heavens, is going to retire from the position of course, Sergeant Major, he's given, he's given me lots and lots of warning, uh, so it's not, he's not suddenly dropped it out of the blue, but Chris has done a marvellous job. He's been a fantastic Corps Sergeant Major for quite a few years now, more than he initially signed, signed up for, um, and he has um, looked after the Corps through thick and thin, through some difficult times, and has given me a great deal of support and wise counsel uh, since I've been here as well. So I want to say a very big thank you to Chris. We will be thanking him uh, more fully when we do finally hand over to Chris's successor. Um, we do have a plan for uh, the successor. How can I put this? We're going Trinitarian. Our Corps Sergeant Major is going to be one in three persons. Uh, so it's difficult to replace Chris, you see, with just one person. So we're going to have, we're going to have three core sergeant majors. We, we've still got a, a, a few I's to dot and a few T's to cross. But hopefully very soon, maybe next Sunday, we'll be in a position to hand commissions to Heather Duncan, core sergeant major for worship, Lyndon Curvin, core sergeant major for program, and Joe Reevil, Corps Sergeant Major for Mission. So that is the plan. And uh, we will uh, look forward to uh, um, the future um, under their uh, wise leadership alongside uh, myself and uh, the PCC and, the, uh, and everybody else in the Corps as well. We all have a part to play. That's what being a Salvationist, that's really what being a Christian is about. We don't just come here to consume uh, a, an hour of worship and go away feeling good. We come here to be challenged so that we might be active for God, not passive members of the church. There, there isn't such a thing, but active members. So whatever role we have, we are here to be God's Christ's followers and God's workers. So that's uh, the plan for the future. Um, we will now take up the offering, please.
this morning and we thank you for this opportunity of joining together. We thank you for the joy that we can receive from you each day. We thank you for your presence. We know you are only ever one prayer away. And now, Lord, as we give these tokens back to you, we ask that you will accept and bless them. We ask that it is used wisely so that others will come to know you as their personal saviour. Amen. the word of God they are affirming the most amazing thing they are saying that the creative power behind the whole universe speaks to us by speaking Genesis says that God brought the universe into being let there be light God spoke to Abraham and David and Moses he spoke to the prophets and through the prophets. He spoke to the Israelites and through the Israelites to the rest of the world. But there's a sense in which the words are not really that important. They are just a means to an end. What matters is that God has chosen to share his mind with us and he does that through words as we do when we share in our minds with one another. We're going to hear a passage of scripture now that I think poetically helps us to see and hear God chain, sharing his mind with us. And to bring us the first half of it, we have Corps Sergeant Major Designate Joe Reevil, and the second half of it, Corps Sergeant Major Designate Heather Duncan. Our scripture reading today is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens, who created all these. He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those whose hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. Amen. So the prophet Isaiah has a big vision of God. He understands how big God is and he's trying to communicate that with God's people, trying to help them understand that the creator of the universe is interested in them and cares about them cares about us we're going to continue our worship now by singing my jesus my savior will remain seated as we sing please
Let's listen to the songsters, please. Thank you very much, Songsters. That's a great song. Uh, we're now going to listen to another Bible reading brought to us by Corps Sergeant Major Designate Lyndon Kirvin. Hope you're smiling as much as I am. Uh, New Testament, book of James, chapter 1, uh, verse 19, paragraph headed, Listening and Doing. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness 
that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Amen. Thank you very much, Lyndon. We're all going to sing again a Salvation Army song. We have a gospel that matches the hour. Gospel is a, a word that just means good news. So it's more words, really, isn't it? But the words are the words of God, good news to the world that he loves us, that he cares for us. So we will stand, please, and sing all the verses. Do you know, when I was preparing the meeting, I thought, that's the, that's the song that I want to sing, remembering the first few lines. I didn't remember until we got up to sing it that it is just a chorus. There's no verses. I completely didn't, didn't realise that. But anyway, that was the, what we wanted. Now we're going to listen, please, to the message from the band. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Ben. That, that was great, wasn't it? Uh, sounds like it should be played in a warmer climate, so that's good on a, on a, lit a slightly chilly day as today. But, you know, I was in band practice on Tuesday night, and I don't remember them practicing that. We didn't practice that, did you? So that was... <laughs> no. <laughs> no, so they played that, that without, without a rehearsal, so that was excellent. So thank you very much. Right. What do we do with God's word to us? The Bible says over and over again that God speaks to us and the Bible itself is God's word to us. What do we do with God's word to us? I want to suggest that it is not just something to make us feel good. And uh, the passage from James addresses that question, the passage that Lyndon read to us, addresses that question about what do we do with God's words to us. The first few verses said, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. When God speaks to us, we should be eager to hear him. That's what James means when he writes that we should be quick to listen. When God speaks to us, it shouldn't go in one ear and out the other. When God speaks to us, it shouldn't be like he's talking to a brick wall. But often it is just like that when God speaks to the world. That's why Jesus says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. There are two things that James hints might get in the way of us hearing properly. One is that we talk too much. He writes that we should be quick to listen and slow to speak. I'm aware of the irony of me standing up here, yapping away, suggesting that sometimes people talk too much. But are there times when our prayers are really just lots of words without us pausing to listen to what God might be saying to us? Are there times when our life is just full of busyness, when all along God is reaching out to us, speaking to us, but we can't hear because of all the clamour? There is a story that Socrates once told a student that he would have to charge him for two lessons instead of one. The people would pay Socrates lots of money so that they could learn, to learn the art of rhetoric, speaking well in public. And Socrates apparently said to this one student, before I teach you how to talk, I'm going to have to teach you how to keep quiet. He needed to learn to listen, to be quiet and listen first. Sometimes we need to be quiet and listen to God. When you pray, says Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, don't keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. And there is that story in the Old Testament in 1 Kings chapter 18 where the prophets of Baal had a showdown with God's prophets and uh, they, they, were, they were trying to see who could make the, the uh, sacrifice burn and the prophets of Baal tried to call down fire from heaven and they cut themselves and they shouted but nothing happened. And then Elijah just prayed quietly to God and the, the sacrifice was consumed. Too much babbling gets us nowhere. The other thing which James suggests will get in the way of us hearing God's word properly is evil. He says get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. I discovered that this word filth in the Greek comes from a root in Greek that has to do with earwax. I know it's not very nice to think about, does it? But there it is in our Bibles, get rid of all moral filth. In other words, James seems to be suggesting that 
sin in our lives, the, the things we do that get in the way of our relationship with God are a bit like earwax. They block up our ears so we can't hear God's word to us. So we need to clear our lives of all those things that get in the way, all the sin, all the, all the brokenness that gets in the way of our relationship with God, gets in the way of us hearing God clearly. And as you allow God to deal with the sin in your life, so you will begin to hear more and more of his word to you. Isaiah chapter 50 says, The Lord God has opened my ear. But hearing properly isn't enough. James says also, humbly accept the word planted in you. We need to hear what God has to say and we need to accept it and embrace it. We need to develop a teachable spirit if we're going to hear what God has to say and respond to his call. Becoming a Christian isn't the end of a journey. It doesn't mean when someone becomes a Christian that at last they've arrived. It means at last they've begun. They've begun their walk with God. Paul said that he hadn't arrived and if Paul, the apostle who wrote so many letters in our New Testament, felt that he hadn't arrived, then I can't think of anyone else who has. Paul said, I have not attained, I press on. But if I am to press on and understand the things of God better, I must have a teachable spirit, I must hear humbly or I won't get anywhere in my spiritual walk. We need to develop a teachable heart. We need to hear humbly, embrace the words that God speaks to us through his word, through scripture, through his word, the, the life of Jesus Christ. We need somehow to make that story, that great story of God, part of our story too. But there are more wise words in, in these few verses of uh, the letter of James that were read for us. James writes, don't merely listen to the word, do what it says. Hearing is always the easy part. Doing, well, that's more difficult. Some of the things that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 perhaps are easy to hear but more difficult to do. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. That's not very easy to do, is it, sometimes? If someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. I don't think Jesus meant that literally, but he was making a point, though, James said, don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. James is saying it's ridiculous to listen to all the things that God has to say and then to ignore them. How many of us know what it is like uh, to feel disappointed when we study ourselves in a mirror? I've got a portrait of Oliver Cromwell. I don't know, Steve, whether you found... No, you didn't. Never mind. You, um, th there is a, there's a famous portrait of Oliver Cromwell uh, that I'm sure you've probably seen at some stage or other. And he commissioned the artist Sir Peter Lely to paint his picture in 1654 and he said to the artist Mr Lely I desire you would use all your skill to paint your picture truly like me and not flatter me at all but remark all these roughness pimples warts and everything as you see me otherwise I will never pay you a farthing for it 
That's where we get the expression today, warts and all. That's what Oliver Cromwell wanted his picture to be, warts and all. Most of us probably expect to look better than we actually do. It's only when perhaps we study our reflection that we see ourselves as we really are. But that's what Oliver Cromwell wanted his painting to reflect. Him as he really was, warts and all. I want to suggest it's only when we allow God's word to penetrate our hearts that we really see ourselves as we are. Not, of course, our physical appearance, but what really matters, the, the way, the things that motivate us, the way we think. It's only when we allow God's word to penetrate our hearts that we really see ourselves as we are. Because in so doing, we're letting into our mind something of the mind of God. It's only when we study God's word that we really notice the warts and see how far short we fall from God's standard. It's only when we really look into the word of God that we notice the disparity between what we say we believe and the things that we do. Jesus has not called us to become people who know the word only. He has called us to be people who live the word, who obey the word. And how do you do that? Just by following closely in his footsteps and seeking every day to do as he would do. So how do we receive the words, the word that God speaks into his world? We need to develop an attentive heart to hear the word of God. We need to develop a humble, teachable spirit to receive the word of God. And we need to do as well as to hear. Are you listening throughout your life with your spiritual ears to what God wants to tell you? Do you have that teachable spirit open to what God has to say? When God speaks, are you willing to do what he says? If you are willing to hear and obey, God will gladly tell you the next step to take and he will be with you always, even to the end of the age, just as he promised in those words of Jesus that we read in the New Testament. We're going to turn to our closing song. There is a hope that burns within my soul. We'll stand please and sing all the verses through.
And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this hour that we have spent together worshipping you. We thank you for your word, your voice. And we pray that as we go out from this place, Lord, we will keep our hearts and ears open to your voice. We will hear it. We will receive it. We will act on it so that our lives become filled with your presence. And so that we can make your kind of difference in our world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.